Hey everybody, Beyondrew TV here. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to an overview video for the Planet Zoo Eurasia pack and the update 1.16. So yeah, first off, we're gonna go ahead and look at the eight new animals that we have coming to the game and go ahead and look at the uh, Zoopedia for them as well. Read over some of the fun facts and all of the uh, different information for them. Then we'll go ahead and take a look at the uh, new things coming to update 1.16. So I figured we would start off with the uh, Wisent or the European Bison since it was plastered all over the uh, Planet Zoo website. They made a video for it during the uh, Twitter uh, breakdown and everything. So yeah, it was just, it seemed like this was the poster child uh, for uh, this update here. So yeah, I thought we would start with the uh, was sent here or the European bison. And yeah, look at this. Looks really, really good. Here is the, um, we got the female here, Yelena. And then over behind there, we have the uh, male. So there's the two differences there. And then yeah, like I said, let's go ahead and pull up the uh, Zoopedia for them and look at some fun information here. So the Wisent population in the wild is 2,518 near threatened. So the Wisent or Bison bonasis, probably said that wrong, also commonly referred to as the European Bison is a large ungulate living in the forests and meadows of Poland, Russia, Belarus, Lithuania, Ukraine, Slovakia, and in Eastern Europe. Wisents are characterized by their large head, shoulder hump, and forequarters, all of which are covered in brown, shaggy coats. The hindquarters are less bulky and are covered in a thinner coat. Uh, both males and females have curled horns that point inwards towards the head and look otherwise alike, though males are larger by about 5%. Bulls grow to 5.9 feet to 6.9 feet tall at the shoulder, uh, 9.2 feet to 10.8 feet long, and weigh uh, 1,356 pounds to 2,028 pounds. Uh, cows are 5.6 feet to 6.6 feet tall at the shoulder, reach a length between 7.9 feet to 9.5 feet, and weigh about 937 pounds to 1,400 pounds. Uh, today, the Wisent is considered a near-threatened species. Uh, by the early 20th century, Wisents were driven to extinction in the wild due to overhunting and habitat loss. Only 60 individuals remained in captive or managed groups. Consequently, the species was offered widespread protection and through captive breeding and reintroduction programs, the ascent was saved from disappearing completely. Deforestation and habitat loss um, through agricultural development as well as inbreeding, depression, and hybridization with domestic cattle still threaten the species today. Careful managed populations of Wisents have been successfully reintroduced in many areas of Europe with further reintroductions planned. So a nice, uh, good uh, story from the brink of extinction there. Now you can see the little populated, sparse populated areas um, that it has. So it's, for one adult, it's going to need 420 meters of space. You're going to need a grade three uh, fence to keep it in. No worries about the water climb obviously not climbing uh, deep water or anything like that and they have a wide range for temperature there uh, if you increase the adults by one you're going up let's see about uh, just under a hundred meters um, so let's move on to the next part there how many do we like to have so up to one male and 12 females for a matriarchal matriarchal herd and dominant bull um, herd there so social needs will sense live in mixed herds of females and their offspring including sub adult males mature males live together in pairs or trios except for breeding periods where they fight each other for access to a group of females. Mixed herds often come together to exchange individuals so they do not have to live exclusive fami uh, familial units. All right so you have to go ahead and plan accordingly uh, not have any uh, kind of fights and all that kind of stuff there. So there's all the information there. Um, we will move on to the next part which is the fun facts. I do like these so we'll go over the fun facts there. So we have five of them. Uh, number one in Poland there was some is known as the Zuber and is the national animal of the country. Nice, very good Poland. Uh, during summer, an adult male with scent may, e uh, may eat up to 77 pounds of food in a day. Uh, the Wisent used to be heavily hunted for its hide, meat, and horns, which were used to make drinking horns. Ah, interesting. So that's very similar to the um, American Midwest and American West with the um, American bison and everything hunted for pretty much the same things. Never heard of the uh, horns part, drinking for horns. Um, number four, there used to be three subspecies of Wisent, uh, two of which are fully extinct now. The Carpathian Wisent, um, native to Moldova, uh, Romania, Hungary, and Ukraine, and the... Uh, Caucasian uh, was sent, uh, native to the Caucasus Mountains in Georgia, Russia, um, Azerbaijan, and Armenia. Uh, these type of species 
um, is the Wasent we know today and the only subspecies to recover from extinction. <clears throat> Excuse me. The Wasent, the last one here, the Wasent is the heaviest terrestrial mammal in Europe, with bulls occasionally weighing over 2,200 pounds. The record weighed weight attained by a wasent is 4,188 pounds, though generally the species is lighter than their American relatives. Ah, so the American bison a little bit bigger than the uh, European there. So uh, very nice. And then they like to mingle with uh, pretty much all of the uh, European animals there, um, all the herbivores and everything at least. So there you go. Very nice. Love to see them more. Okay, and next up, let's take a look at the mute swan, which I think might be the community's uh, most anticipated animal for what I could gather on all these social medias. Everyone's always excited for birds, even if they're not uh, fully, you know, flight birds or anything like that, or maybe something for like an aviary. Uh, everyone's always uh, really, really excited for any type of bird model that we're getting in the game. So yeah, here is the uh, mute swan. Went ahead and made a little, uh, what do you call them, a gaggle? Is it a gaggle of swans? I think it's a gaggle of geese, but yeah, what do you call a, a group of swans? Is it a gaggle? <laughs> uh, but anyways, let's go ahead and uh, take a look. Here is the uh, female, and we have a male next to her there. Um, not too much of a difference. It doesn't look like between the two. Maybe the male's a little bit bigger. But um, in either case, let's go ahead and let's take a look um, at the Zoopedia and some fun information about our friends here, our mute swans. So let's see. Search the mute swan. General info, mute swan. So it is of least concern at the moment. Uh, not sure the population in the wild. Yeah, that'd be pretty hard to uh, get a uh, gather on that. The mute swan, or Cygnus alor, haha, is a large waterfall that lives throughout Europe and Asia with invasive populations in North America and Japan. It is white with black feet and an orange red bill, and black markings around the nostrils, eyes, as well as the edge of the tip of the bill. Um, a lucidic morph can occur, which is almost indistinguishable in adults, where the legs have a pink color instead of black. Juvenile swans are normally gray, but have a white plumage if exhibiting uh, lucis, lucis, lucism. Excuse me. Mute swans have a distinctive black basal no, uh, knob on the root of the beak between the eyes. This knob is generally larger in males, but varies widely based on the individual environment and time of year, growing larger in breeding males and females during the mating season. Males are typically about four and a half to five and a half feet long, have a wingspan between six and a half to almost eight feet, and weigh around 20 to 31 pounds. Female mute, mute swans are slightly smaller at around four to five feet long with a wingspan of six to seven feet and weigh around 17 to 23 pounds. As a species of least concern, the mute swan is not endangered. The species is widespread across the world, inhabiting temper temperate regions. They are often used as decorative fowl in parks and gardens, and escapees of such settings have established a naturalized population in the United States. They are protected across most of their range, and despite poaching, their population numbers are still uh, increasing overall. Yeah, I, you know, across the United States here, yeah, especially here in Illinois, yep, we have our swans in our local ponds and everything. You see them all over the place. So, yep, I'm pretty sure everyone is very familiar with the swan. It's going to look great inside of uh, the zoo as a very uh, natural animal. I can see a lot of people using this uh, not only as a an exhibit or habitat animal, maybe just like, again, a kind of natural animal to go alongside like the skunks, raccoons, and you just kind of, kind of have these animals just uh, out and about, uh, not necessarily behind a cage or uh, a fence or anything like that. So uh, here's your um, origins and where they are at. Again, like we, they said, uh, this is where they originated from, but you can see swans all over the place. For the um, very, very small enclosure um, requirements there for them, uh, you'll need a grade one fence. Again, they're not going to be jumping over much or anything. Uh, if you need two or more, you're going up only by 12 meters, you know, another, yeah, it's only going up by 12 meters. Um, and don't forget, of course, your water requirement, which is um, exactly half of the required uh, space for their habitat. So over to species, uh, social needs and everything. So yeah, you can have a boatload of swans together. Um, it says 25 to 25, so 50 all day if you'd like to. So yeah, you can just get a bunch of them uh, together. So social needs, mute swans live in a monogamous pairs and may congregate with others in large groups during migrations. Some pairs may also be territorial and reject other swans on their territory. Juveniles who've not yet yet reach sexual maturity uh, will live together in flocks until they form a breeding pair with another individual. Flock of swans. Just like a seagull. Okay, cool. Flock of seagull. There we go. Okay. So there's your uh, general social information. Let's get some fun facts on these guys. Uh, fun fact number one, although mute swans are monogamous, they do not always mate for life. 
may have several partners in their lifetime. Gotcha, okay. Mute swans are the heaviest flighted birds. Uh, a particularly large male weighing uh, 50, almost 51 pounds was the largest flying bird ever recorded. That's a big boy. Uh, mute swans are highly intelligent and have been known to bear grudges. Uh, yeah, if they're anything like uh, geese, then yeah, they definitely bear grudges. Oof. Uh, fun fact number four, mute swans have been introduced to North America as ornamental birds for ponds. Uh, the temperate climate, similar to that in Eurasia, uh, meant that escaped birds could comfortably survive in the wild. And finally, um, in English, the typical coloration of the mute swan is referred to as royal swan, uh, while the lucidic morph is known as the Polish swan. Ah, interesting. And uh, if we take a look at this, kind of similar to the wasent there, uh, you can hang out with the European fallow deer, red deer, wild boar, and the wasent scent. Okay, right, so let's go ahead and move on to the next animal. Let's take a look. Um, let's see here. What would be a good one to look at? Let's look at the uh, wild, wild boar. Why not? All right, next up we have the wild boar. And yeah, look at these chonkers here. <laughs> these two are uh, some of my favorites in the pack. They just have so much personality and character to them. And um, yeah, I can just really love the uh, the way the fur and everything looks on them. It looks a uh, really, really great model. So and it's always fun just to sit here and just kind of listen to them every so often because they just sit there and... Yep, there they go. <laughs> Anyways, I put out a mud pit back here, so hopefully uh, by the end of me reading the Zoopedia, we can have them uh, rolling around in the mud. But speaking of the Zoopedia, let's go ahead and over uh, talk over the uh, snorting and everything going on in the background. So here's the wild boar. The wild boar, or sus scrofa. Scrofa? Scrofa. Sus scrofa? That's sus. Also known as the Eurasian wild pig, is a pig native throughout the temperate regions of Eurasia, as well as Mediterranean northern Africa, Asian deserts and shrublands, and tropical rainforests and grasslands of Southeast Asia. Wow, all over the place. Um, it has also been introduced to North and South America and Oceania. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's kind of a, a nuisance, unfortunately, here in the uh, United States. You're hearing stories all the time, especially in Texas, um, excuse me, where wild boar um, herds are just taking over farms and everything. So they're having to hire basically just uh, hunters with machine guns <laughs> to take out. Just it, it's, it's crazy how, uh, how much they're uh, reproducing down there. Um, so anyways, yeah, due to its uh, wide distribution adaptability, there are 16 recognized subspecies of wild boar. Uh, varying greatly in appearance. The largest wild boars live in Central and Eastern Europe. Uh, their coat is made up of dark brown, coarse bristles, which form into a mane on the main male's neck, while wild boars have a large head which reaches up to a third of their body length, and together with their powerful neck muscles, make them adept at digging even in frozen ground. Uh, the species is sexually dimorphic with males being larger and heavier than females. Uh, males can reach a size of 33 inches to 39 inches tall at the shoulder and about 5 to 6 feet long and weigh about 165 to 267 pounds. Uh, females tend to be about 30 inches to 35 inches at the shoulder and about 4 to 5 feet in length and weigh between 132 to 198 pounds. Uh, wild boars are extremely widespread and populous and therefore listed as a species of least concern. Uh, due to overhunting, they had become extinct in Great Britain and in the High Middle Ages, but small breeding populations were introduced to southern England in the 1980s. Uh, they have also been introduced to North America for hunting purposes, and escapees of these groups have established invasive populations of feral wild boars and domestic pig hybrids. Pig hybrids, that's what, now you don't want to hear those two words together. In South America, wild boars were imported for breeding purposes with intentional releases and escapes resulting in invasive populations being established in Brazil. Uh, in its native range, the wild boar is hunted for meat and represents a keystone of their habitat's ecosystem. However, in the Americas, measures are in place to manage the invasive populations to protect native wildlife. Yep, that's what I was talking about before uh, reading the rest of that there. But yeah, no, there were, again, especially you see videos on like TikTok and YouTube of just guys in like helicopters and you know just humvees and they're taking straight up mini guns and <laughs> you know they're good old boys having a good time but it's actually a real it's a real issue they're really having issues with it um especially like i said down in the uh, southern area of the united states and everything so um but yeah there is the original um source of them the origins man what a huge area for them to um, originate from that is just the, the earth basically <laughs> um, you're gonna need a 310 meter uh, land requirement 
uh, grade three fence, so make sure you get the grade three fence in there. If you had another one, it's not too bad of a space requirement, pretty low uh, for the piggies there. Uh, species uh, data here for the social needs. Female wild boars live in sounders led by an old matriarch, consisting of non-breeding females and mothers with their offspring. Adult males are solitary for most of the year, joining sounders only during the breeding season. Young and sub-adult males live in bachelor groups. Nice. So you can have up uh, from 3 up to 30, uh, one male and 29 females. So it sounds like the females are a pretty tight-knit uh, group there, like raising, having the older ones raise the kids and everything. That's oh, interesting. I think it's kind of a cool little system they have going on there. So very nice. Some fun facts. Uh, if a wild boar mother dies before her piglets are mature, her offspring is adopted by other sows of her sounder. Yeah, like I said, that's a really cool um, uh, kind of community setting they have up. Uh, wild boars can smell edible roots and tubers buried in 10 inches of soil. Wow. Uh, wild boar hair used to be used for toothbrush bristles. I remember hearing that before, now that I just read that, uh, which, you know, we say, ew, gross, but, you know, when you don't have anything else to use, it's better than uh, nothing, basically. Uh, the wild boar's main predator is the gray wolf. Wolf. Um, so you definitely should put them right next to each other. The wild boar has poor eyesight, but compensates with its excellent sense of smell and hearing. Are wild boars the ones they use to get uh, truffles? Is that what they use for, um, or is it a different kind of pig? Um, anyways, yeah, I, I know that they use some sort of uh, pig for that. So, And then, uh, yeah, very common uh, theme that we've seen here. These are the animals that were sent red deer, mute swan, and European fallow deer uh, that they can hang out with. So let's take a look here one last. Oh, we just missed the pig rolling around in the dirt. That's my fault there, but you know what? He's still having a, a, a boinking good time. So uh, next up, hey, that was great seeing the uh, the wild boars. Again, they look fantastic. Can't wait to have some of them um, in my zoos and everything. So, uh, But next up, let's take a look at maybe the second favorite or the, maybe the second best response I saw on social media. Uh, let's take a look at the sloth bear. Um, I think everyone was really, really excited about the sloth bear when they finally saw it come out. Next up, like I said, we have the sloth bear. And yeah, no, like I was um, saying before, I think this one got the best response. A lot of people were a little bit, little bit hesitant uh, leading up to the reveal of this one. Not sure how it was going to turn out just because it's a little bit of a unique um, shape and animal. You know, the, the head with its uh, bigger oval or bigger circular shape and everything. They're just a unique looking uh, bear or animal overall. So I think people are a little hesitant, but after it came out, everyone was very much on board saying how much um, it looks, uh, looks really, really good and everything. And yeah, I think it looks really great. It has that fun little walk that it does too and everything so look at that <laughs> I think it looks really really uh, just uh, dorky and great in the in the best way so uh, let's go ahead and take a look here we have the uh, male that we've been following and then in the background there we have the the female just a little bit smaller but still uh, still looking great so let's go ahead and check out the uh, Zoopedia little sloth bear there we go to, to, to. All right, general info. Sloth bear is a little vulnerable here. Let's le read about that. So living in the tropical rainforest and grasslands of India, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, Bhutan, and Nepal, the sloth bear, or Melarusus yersinius, is a medium-sized bear. It has shaggy black fur, a light gray muzzle, and a distinctive gray-white crescent marking across its upper chest. The head is broad, with an oblong snout and hairy, tufted ears. Males and females look alike, but males are 10% to 20% larger than females, measuring between 4.5 to about 6 feet long, uh, 24 inches to 35 inches tall at the shoulder, and weighing 176 to 320 pounds. Uh, sloth bears are considered a vulnerable species. They are mainly threatened by habitat destruction through deforestation and agricultural land conversion. They are also indirectly threatened by the removal of termite mounds, which are a key food source uh, for them. Additionally, sloth bears are killed by poachers for their body parts, which are sought after for traditional medicine, um, and they are at risk of being captured and put into dancing bear shows. Oh, that's unfortunate. Uh, conservation efforts include protecting areas of their range, uh, seizing captive bears and educating the communities who live alongside the bears about their natural history and how to coexist effectively with them. So yeah, hopefully some re-education uh, start to get away from the um, that kind of old you know dancing bear circus, um, you know using animals like that. So uh, natural habitat, like I said, looking in the uh, India uh, region there for the most part. 
going to need a pretty good size um, land requirement for them. 850 meters just for the one. If we go up to two, that's 930. So yeah, it starts to get up there. They also need some climbing requirement. No uh, water requirement or anything. Uh, you're going to need a grade four climb proof fence. Uh, that's nearly 10 feet tall. And uh, yeah, they can survive in very, very uh, wide range of temperatures. So yeah, you have to definitely pay attention to this as you uh, build for these animals in game. So then species data, social needs. Uh, sloth bears are solitary with the exception of a mother with her cubs. They only interact to mate. So one to two uh, group size is all you're gonna get. Uh, so probably if you're going to do multiples, you could always do the, what, the two brothers together or the two sisters together, um, or you could have a mating pair together as well. Just keep an eye on um, how many cubs and offspring they have and everything. So don't want to get it too uh, overcrowded for them. And research status, fun facts. Uh, the crest on a sloth bear's chest is thought to be used as a threat display to deter tiger attacks. Wow, okay. So that's a really great evolutionary trait if that's the case. Um, after a mother... <clears throat> Excuse me, after a mother sloth bear gives birth to her cubs, she will not leave her den for three to eight weeks. Sloth bears have been known to fight off tigers and cause serious injuries with their claws. Uh, sloth bears are capable are able to completely close their nostrils, which protect them from dust or when raiding beehives or termite nests. Oh, that's neat. So yeah, the, no uh, bees or anything or termites get up their nose or anything. That's uh, that's pretty neat. I wonder if uh, that's how uh, anteaters kind of work as well. No, no, they're different because they have a suction cup. Anyway, suction tube. Moving on. <laughs> Unlike other bears, sloth bears have no front teeth as an adaptation for sucking up insects. Wow, that's really interesting. So yeah, they uh, they have totally adapted uh, to being a uh, an insect eater there. So and then yeah, they, you don't want to put the sloth bears with uh, with anyone else um, with anyone else. You just want to keep them solitary. So yeah, really unique animal, really cool looking. Um, yeah, just really unique overall and can't wait to have one of these uh, in my zoo there. Uh, cool, let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Why don't we take a look at the Wolverine. Great. Now, next up, we have the Wolverine. Definitely heard of these guys before. And yeah, look at this little, uh, pretty sure they're vicious little things. Yeah. So look at this vicious little thing. Oh, it's kind of cute. Maybe that's how they draw you in, though. They look a little cute, and then you get close, and yeah, they get you. So uh, there is the uh, male model there. And then if we go over here, here is the female. There you go. Yep. Look at her lips. Ready to eat somebody. Nice. All right, let's go ahead and learn about these things. Maybe I'll get proven wrong and find out that, actually, no, they're totally uh, gentle giants. I don't think that's the case. <laughs> let's see, Wolverines. So, gulo gulo. Oh, that's a fun thing to say. Gulo gulo. <laughs> a large um, mustelid, the Wolverine, or gulo gulo, is native to the tundras or taigas of northern Eurasia and North America. It has a stocky build with sturdy legs, a curved back, bear-like face, and small rounded ears. It has thick brown black fur with a yellow white streak that runs from the head down each side of the body rejoining at the tail uh, wolverines grow between 26 inches to 44 inches long uh, da -da -da, 14 inches to 18 inches tall at the shoulder and weigh between 20 to 66 pounds uh, males are slightly larger and significantly heavier than females the wolverine is considered a species of least concern due to its widespread range and low population density, although its numbers are declining overall due to hunting and habitat loss. However, the European population has declined so significantly it is considered vulnerable. Ah, interesting. So it's very uh, location dependent there. So uh, yeah, in Europe, hopefully they can uh, turn that around and get it to the least concern uh, state or better. So there's the um, origin of it. it. Yeah, like I said, it covers a huge swath of land. So um, even though unfortunately in Europe, it sounds like, you know, Know, you're getting significant uh, losses um, due to hunting and all that in North America they must have really stable if not booming populations so um, surprisingly for the small thing like this um, you actually need a little bit bigger of a land requirement than I would anticipate they also need some uh, climbing as well you're gonna need a grade 3 uh, proof climb proof fence and uh, really huge range for uh, temperature there so and if you go up by a few uh, oh it actually goes up by a pretty good amount Yep, so you're going to want to keep an eye on that. They they are a little deceiving uh, in their requirement for land and everything for uh, what you might think they need. So uh, social and uh, social needs. Wolverines are solitary animals and live alone except for mothers with their kits. Yeah, because they're jerks. Uh, so... 
Group size, you have up to one male and one female, so you keep them separate, <laughs> unless it's their uh, the mom and the kits and everything. And some fun facts here. So the Wolverine's Latin name is Gulo Gulo. I'm just gonna say that all the time now. I'm gonna run into work tomorrow and just say Gulo Gulo, and no one's gonna they're gonna think I'm crazy. But it's no, it's uh, it just means glutton in Latin. So I'm just speaking Latin. I'm just smart. Uh, fun fact number two: the Wolverine has an excellent sense of smell and can detect food through 20 feet of snow cover. Oh wow, okay. Uh, Wolverines have a very strong bite that can crush bones. Yes, that's what I've, I've definitely heard that before. Uh, Wolverines have been known to drive off wolves and grizzly bears when protecting their food or kits. Look at vicious. Uh, Wolverines have large, specially adapted feet that allow them to run across the snow at high speeds. Very interesting. So they almost have like snow uh, snowshoes on for their feet, basically. So there you go. So don't let the smaller size, smaller statue, uh, stature, excuse me, uh, fool you. These little things will rip you to shreds, crush bones, fight off bears and wolves, and you name it. They will, uh, they'll do it to you there. So, all right, very nice. Uh, respect the animal. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Let's take a look at the, um, is it Sega or Saiga? Um, this is like the alien looking thing. I don't even know. It's, it was, when I first saw it, it was another one of these animals where I'm like, that's not real. That's not a real animal, but yep, I was, it, it's a real animal. Yeah, no, you, you can't convince me that this is a real thing. What the heck? <laughs> I don't know. I've just, I've never heard of or seen this thing in my life until this this pack basically i've just been sheltered that much i guess but now even seeing the male version I'm like version for the first time with the horns and everything this is not a real animal someone is punking me right now <laughs> but oh my gosh how unique and what a character this is um so yeah obviously like i said this is the male with its very unique horns there and then you got the female in back pretty big size difference between between the two as well um but yeah i have to know more this is the animal i've been anticipating uh wanting to know more about um since the pack came out so yeah let's check out the uh the zoopedia here so i personally can learn some more about uh what is obviously an alien that everyone is trying to convince me is from this planet so critically endangered very unfortunate i don't want to hear that uh the sega or saiga i'm gonna say saiga i do uh, i apologize if it is saiga uh the saiga antelope or saiga Tadarika is a bovid living on the steppes and grasslands of Mongolia, Kazakhstan, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, and Russia. It is tan in color with a pale underside and has large eyes and rounded ears. The distinctive large nose has broad mobile nostrils. Mobile nostrils! <laughs> <laughs> okay, which is larger than males. Males are also generally built larger and heavier than females and carry upright, pale, and slightly translucent horns, which are 11 inches to 15 inches long. So that's why they look kind of all weird and stuff. They're kind of translucent. This thing gets weirder and weirder. Uh, they stand in, uh, they stand 26 inches to 32 inches tall at the shoulder, are three and a half to four and a half feet long, and weigh between 57 to 152 pounds. Uh, females are 24 inches to 29 inches tall, uh, 3.3 Three feet to 4.2 feet long and weigh 57 to 99 pounds. Uh, the Saiga is considered critically endangered. After the collapse of the Soviet Union in the 1990, in 1990 uh, their numbers decreased due to poaching for their meat and horns for use in traditional medicine. They also experienced several population crashes caused by factors such as habitat loss, uh, their migratory routes being interrupted due to human development, the spread of uh, lethal zoonotic diseases and climate change, harsher winters leading to limited food availability, and hotter summers leading to better conditions for harmful bacteria to thrive. Uh, in the 90s, their numbers have been reduced to 40,000 uh, 40, from previously millions of individuals. Uh, conservation efforts to reduce poaching and prevent the spread of diseases have helped increase their numbers again. However, the genetic diversity of the wild saiga is much decreased. Yeah, going from millions to less than 40,000, that is wild. And right now it says the population in the wild is ranged from 123,450 to about 124,200. So, wow, that is a wild story for a wild-looking animal. And, um, yeah, no, we don't have many, like, more unique things like that. Um, so, yeah, hopefully that gets a... Uh, I think, a better story or a better outcome and everything like that so yep there's the area uh, that they range in 425 meters for land requirement for one of them i'm sure you're going to need more than one in a habitat though um let's see grade two fencing four feet tall if you need two of them oh it really doesn't go up that, that much really doesn't go but by, by, by uh, that much you need three of them to get to the 500 range so uh not too bad there 
species data. Uh, Saiga antelopes live in mixed herds comprised of interrelated groups of females and their offspring and solitary males. Uh, during breeding season, a male gathers a harem of five to ten females and their offspring. A harem. Haven't heard that one before. So the group size, you're looking at four to eleven, one male, ten females. Um, so one dominant male per group, female hierarchy based on age. Uh, so there you go. You have a nice big herd uh, that can go out there. So let's see if you wanted to do the full ten. You're looking at still under a thousand for the thing there. So yeah, very nice. Fun facts. Yeah, I'm really interested in these. Uh, the Saiga antelope can run up to 50 miles an hour, five zero. Holy cow. Can't, isn't, aren't cheetahs like, it's not like 60, 62 miles an hour and they're the land, fastest land mammal or whatever. Holy cow. Um, fun fact number two, the Saiga antelope migrates over 600 miles between the summer and winter. That's a wall at 50 miles an hour. Hey, you'll get there in no time. Uh, the Saiga antelope's nose is thought to be adapted to filter out dust in the hot summers. Okay, yeah, I was really interested in the nose. There's got to be a reason for the weird shaped nose and being able to move it however you want to. Uh, Saiga antelope are often predated by wolves and their calves are often killed by foxes, dogs, and eagles. Could you imagine? Seeing an eagle flying through the air with a baby, like, nose psyga thingy, that would be, that I'd have to take a picture and then feel bad. Uh, number five, last one, when trading rhino horns became illegal, psyga antelope horns became more in demand and were often used as rhino horn substitutes in traditional medicine. Uh, this was even actively encouraged by rhino conservationists. Oh, you don't like to hear that. Um, maybe they can come up with, because uh, I was reading that for rhino horns, they're making, uh, was it the false ones or the uh, the fake ones that are just as good, if not better, than the real ones kind of thing. Maybe I can do that for the Saiga as well, make a uh, um, a fake horn that the, the poachers will like to sell and everything. So there you go, really interesting species. It doesn't like to share anything. It's a solitary thing. What a what an interesting animal there. Again, I'm, I'm probably like in the, uh, not in the loop or anything. Everyone kind of has known about these, but I'm, my mind is just blown. Just, that's just, it's, it's like up there with the narwhal. Like they're, they're not real kind of things to me. So <laughs> anyways, enough blathering about that. Uh, let's look at, uh, oh, we're at the last uh, habitat animal. Let's look at the Takin, and then we're gonna go ahead and look at the exhibit animal, which is the Herman's tortoise. All right, let's go ahead and talk about the Takin. Ah, I had to do the little pun. Over under how many YouTubers, their thumbnails and their titles and everything, whenever they build for this animal is going to be some pun on talking and stuff like that. You kind of have to when you do this. But anyways, seeing this now, this is the first time I've placed this animal since I've gotten the pack. Uh, this thing just shot up my... Uh, my rankings there is maybe one of my favorite chonkers animals like there's just something so chonky and adorable about it i love this thing uh the coloration on the the fur and everything is outstanding as well that's really really cool looking so um yeah this is another animal don't know much about didn't really hear about it until this pack uh and that's why i love this game get to learn about a bunch of really cool animals never heard of so uh but yeah here's the male talking and then over here we have the female looking pretty similar just a little bit smaller um, but hey, cool, let's go ahead and learn a bit about the talking while they get to know each other. Talking. Taken? Is it going to be taken? Watch, someone's going to comment below below. It's taken. All right, so I'm going to call it talking. So the talking or Budo Rakis taxi color um, is large goat antelope living in the uh, montane regions of Tibet, Bhutan, Northern India, Myanmar, and China. Uh, Takins have a stocky cow-like build and are covered in shaggy fur. Uh, there are four subspecies of Takin which vary in uh, coat colorations and size. Lakes are often darkened to nearly black while the overall coloration ranges from marbled black brown to gray yellow to golden. Males are larger than females, but both sexes have horns that measure up to 25 inches in length. Male Takins are 5.3 to 7.2 feet along with 28 inches to 55 inches tall at the shoulder, with a weight between 660 to 770 pounds. They're big boys! Uh, females are around uh, 5 to 6.5 feet long with 37 inches to 53 inches tall at the shoulder and weigh 529 to 617 pounds. Uh, the Takin is considered vulnerable with two of its subspecies, the Bhutan and Mishimi Takins, even listed as endangered. Bummer! It is under threat due to overhunting, habitat loss through deforestation, road building, and agriculture development, uh, disturbances through tourism venture, and disease spread by domestic livestock. The Takin is protected species of Bhutan, India, and China, the latter containing 14 nature preserves protecting the species and its habitat. 
Well, it's good to hear that, you know, local communities and countries and everything are doing uh, what they can to uh, set up these uh, nature reserves and uh, educating the local populace. But dang, you know, it's you always hear the same same kind of themes kind of pop up there. Overhunting, uh, deforestation, you know, it's... Uh, it's just kind of a common theme. So there you go. Here's the origins of the uh, where they're from and everything. Not too bad of an area. Let's see. You got a grade three fence with four feet. And if you want to add some more, it does jump up pretty considerably. What is it? About 60 meters every single time that you do it. So if you need to have a few of these, which looks like you do, um, you do have to really consider the space that they need. So social needs. During most of the year, Takan lived in mixed family groups with males moving between them, uh, though males may also live more solitary. During summer, many of these groups will join to form herds of up to 300 individuals. So, but for in-game at the moment, we're looking at 2 to 20 for the group size, one male and up to 19 females. So again, if we go back to our natural habitat and just do you know, just around over half of that, you're, you're looking at 870 meters. So yeah, it, that group size, that, that really matters. So keep an eye on that as they start to reproduce and everything. Um, so cool, fun facts. Talking can live at altitudes up to 15,000 feet. So some cliff side dwellers there. Uh, number two, the Takan is the national animal of Bhutan. Number three, the Takan is a slow runner, but an excellent climber in adaptation to its uh, montane environment. Number four, Takans have multiple vocalizations that they use for different purposes, such as a cough to warn the herd of danger, a trill to communicate with calves, and a roar when fearful. They cough with a chew. I'm gonna be scary. Uh, number five, uh, there are four subspecies of Takan, the Sichuan Takan, Bhutan Takan, Golden Takan, and the Mishimi Takan. Very nice, all right, and can, do they hang out with anybody? They don't wanna hang out with anybody. So there you go. Very interesting species. Again, uh, uh, kind of sim similar to the Saiga. I hadn't really heard of this uh, one before this pack came out and everything. And I'm uh, really glad that I got to uh, see what it's all about. It's going to be really interesting to see the uh, in, uh, habitats and enclosures that you all build uh, for these since they're really, really good at um, cliff faces and mountain uh, regions. So cool. Hey, let's go check out the um, the last animal in the pack, which is going to be our exhibit animal. Uh, it's the Herman's tortoise. I wonder who found that. Right, and to finish this out here, we have the Herman's tortoise. Got two of them hanging out in our exhibit box here. Uh, so first, uh, figured we'd, uh, of course, take a look at them nice and close as we can. Really cool uh, shell and everything. Love the yellow and black looking like a bumblebee uh, there. So very cool. Uh, then yeah, let's go ahead and check out their exhibit box. I went ahead and put up the uh, 3D facade. So here's the 3D facade um, for it. Looks pretty uh, normal like the other ones that we have. And then here's the 2D facade. Just does look like, at least to me, a new new um, background for the 2D facade. Fits in really well with the uh, kind of desert Mediterranean vibe. Let's look at the, um, so the climate for them. This is their range there. It's looking 77 to 95 degrees and 50 to 60% humidity uh, is gonna keep them nice and comfortable. Let's look at the different layouts that we can do. So we have a bunch of rock piles. Put that, all three of them down. There we go. We also have some high basking lamps that we can place down three of them there we go and last we have the broken hollow logs that we can place down oh, there, right there and right there so there's the different uh, customizations that you can do uh, once you fully level it up so let's go ahead and look at the zoopedia for them Herman's tortoise. There we go. So population of the wild is unknown. They're near threatened. Uh, Herman's tortoise, or Testudo hermani, is a, spe a small species of tortoise that is found throughout the coastal forests of the Mediterranean. The carapace, carapace, is in uh, is patterned in yellow and black and varies based on the subspecies and by individual. The eastern subspecies is much larger than the western, reaching sizes of up to 11 inches long compared to the 7 inches long. Uh, females are generally larger than males in this species. Depending on their size, Herman's tortoise can weigh between 4.5 to about 9 pounds. So uh, the number of Herman tortoises in the wild have declined due to habitat loss through construction, wildfires, and herbicides, as well as poaching for the pet trade. Uh, therefore, they are considered a near-threatened species. Uh, road construction separates tortoise populations and reduces mating opportunities in genetic exchange. Because Herman's tortoise take so many years to mature, they are particularly vulnerable to this as they are often killed before having uh, reproduced at all. 
Uh, captive breeding and reintroduction schemes are in place to help increase the numbers of wild tortoises. All right. Next up, their natural environment, like they said, up in looks like uh, a lot of Greece, Italy, um, yeah, some areas of France there as well, a little bit of uh, Turkey, a little bit, yeah, so a whole bunch of different uh, areas in the Mediterranean, very nice, so, um, oh, I was going to look at, like, what kind of fencing stuff you have, it's an exhibit box, you put them in the exhibit box, so, <laughs> um, there we go, next up, species data. Hermit tortoises only spend time together to mate, but tolerate nearby individuals provided there is enough space and food available. Tolerate. I like that. So they'll have neighbors, it's, but it's only if there's enough grub, uh, enough uh, food at the buffet. It's like, all right, Larry, you can stay there, but uh, stay over there. <laughs> Uh, so you can have 1 to 16 of them um, inside your group size there. Um, so yeah, really, you can have a whole bunch of them inside of the exhibit boxes. Five different facts here. Herman's tortoise hibernate for 6 to 12 weeks a year. The shell of a Herman's tortoise is made up of 60 interconnecting bones. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know that. Uh, the exact life expectancy of Herman's tortoise is unknown, but it's thought to be up to 120 years. Dang! Those tiny little things, 120 years. Uh, number four, Herman's tortoises are the slowest growing tortoise species. And the last one, before their shell hardens, young Herman's tortoises are vulnerable to predation from uh, magpies, wild boars, foxes, and hedgehogs even. So there you go, and then of course they only hang out with themselves. So there you go, there's the um, last of our animals, the and the only exhibit animal, this is gonna be the Herman's tortoise. And again, I really like how they're uh, looking like a bumblebee, right? It's almost like a warning uh, sign to all other uh, animals, like stay away warning <laughs> so yeah really really impressed with the uh, animals um, for those of you that follow my channel you know that I'm not usually big up on the animal packs but like I said there were so many just unique animals uh, coming to this one um, that I just was really really interested in it so uh, but yeah don't stop there um, we have some um, information for the free update 1.16 so let's go ahead and change gears and uh, see what's coming for everyone there before I forget and move on to the uh, free update, let's take a look at the uh, construction bits that we're getting, which is uh, just these uh, signs that are coming with all of the animals. So there you have all the animal signs that you can go ahead and put up in your zoos. Really like the uh, like how art style that they chose for this. Looks really nice. So there's all of your uh, animals there. And then we actually get a statue as well. We get a Takan statue. So there you go. So yeah, uh, almost forgot about that, but we do have of course, you're, um, we always get these uh, signs with the animal packs and everything, so very nice to see that uh, continue. Alright, so for the first thing for update 1.16 that we're all getting is the modular gift shops or souvenir shops here. And yeah, these are really, really cool. I was a little bit hesitant, didn't know how much uh, versatility, creativity, customization we were going to get with these, uh, but I can safely say it is a lot. So yeah, here's a very, very basic, quick little setup uh, that I did just to kind of show the different variations um, that we can do uh, with these. So you'll see that um, a lot of the these, uh, so uh, let's let's start at the beginning, how shall we? <laughs> so the first thing that you do when you uh, slap this down, we're gonna go to guest facilities, type in souv for souvenir, and then you'll see we have our modular souvenir shop. That is what you first place down. They also have extensions to it, so you can extend out uh, your shop in whatever direction and all that fun stuff that you would like to. Um, and then yeah, you can go ahead and individually place down your different display shops or displays here. So you have uh, poster displays, small shelf displays, uh, shop tall hanging displays, corner displays, a whole range of them. We have balloons and everything. So uh, like I was saying, you can go ahead and change all the colors uh, for these. They're very, very versatile for the color editor. Um, so that is really fun. And then yeah, once you place these down, again, wherever you would like to, if I hit here, we can place these wherever we would like to, spin them around. All that kind of fun stuff x axis you can even kind of mess with them that way actually that might be a free build thing disregard <laughs> i forgot i have a uh, free build mod turned on so that might actually be wrong uh, but anyways yeah so there's really big versatility um, with these here and then once you click on them you'll see it pops up this menu and says item for sale so we're going to go ahead and do this we have a nice little drop down menu and at the moment we have two of them here posters and it will go ahead and autofill the poster tubes there and then umbrellas it'll bring up the price and you can go ahead and you know disable or enable it do the prices and all that so yeah that is for all of these um modular pieces here even the balloons we can go up to balloons and say hey how about a giraffe how about a red panda and there you go it switches accordingly 
So, um, you know, just again, you can go through all these. Um, for the most part, I have different um, things that you can kind of put down there. You can slow down the video if you'd like to just see all of the different ones. Uh, I tried to put a versatile amount on each shelf. Some of them also have, um, like I said, different things. So t-shirts, tote bags. So yeah, no, a lot of different um, options as far as um, the different souvenirs go and everything like that. Uh, so that is very, very fun. And if we also take a look, there are... Ha! Okay, I found it. It was under the construction menu. I was looking under facilities. But anyways, if you go under construction, or under all, and I typed in Suv for souvenir, you will see that all of these items that are up on the shelves and everything are, for the most part, if not all, individual items that we can just use. So you can go ahead and place these on the shelves as you would like to uh, yourselves and fill out your own shelves and everything. And this is really cool. They have so, so much versatility. Uh, some of these are really neat because they remind me from the Planet Coaster days, jumping way back there. Uh, some of the first items that came out with the uh, mod maker for Planet Coaster were like mugs. And um, I remember Jaunty or Geekism made some uh, puzzles and stuff like that. You have posters, you have these poster tubes that go in the middle there. So I know some of our uh, amazing uh, small piece users are going to use this small little tube there for uh, whatever they would like to and everything. So no, I thought that was a really cool addition that they gave us access to um, all these individual pieces. Uh, well, yeah, here's what I wanted to show. Look, at they even have some of the statues from the game just kind of shrunk down, which makes me think and believe, uh, is there, a, is there, did they just take this model and just shrink it down? And if so, can we have a, can we have a shrinker too? Can we have a scale piece as well? Because yeah, these, uh, these statues right here are totally just the big base game statues that we get um, just kind of shrunk down so I'd love to know if there's a uh, if there's a scale tool frontier that you use to do that come on baby give us access to it <laughs> uh, but anyways souvenir shops really really cool I'm really excited to see how people use these um, in game and again um, for me uh, for myself I know it's a lot more versatile uh, than I really thought it was going to be I thought we were gonna have just like a lot of pre-made kind of um, things not being able to place anything where we would like to place them and everything but uh, totally um, put my place totally wrong on that and yeah really really versatile with the um, amount of customization that we can do there so really really happy about that Next up is the multi-select by FlexiColor option. Uh, so yeah, this is gonna make so many people very, very happy, myself included. Uh, this is gonna make changing colors within a group so much more easier. Before, you know, you click on, let's say for this tractor, uh, if you wanted to change one little color or a few in here, you'd have to try and meticulously get your way. Uh, that, 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 it'd just be a son of a gun to try and do. Now, if we go down to multi-select, clicking that button or hitting I, We'll have a new little tab here, the click to select all items in a group with the same palette and colors. So we can click that or we can hold alt while we do this. And if we click on an object that we're looking to change, click that, boom, click that, boom. We can click on different items and it'll bring up all of the same uh, type of that item and we can change the color for it in one fail swoop. So bam, I wanted that all to be that color actually. Uh, then you come back in here, you know what? everything that's like that yeah, I actually wanted it to be you know this that or the other thing so yeah it's just it makes it so much simpler now to come back through and change like things and grouped things um, without having to just individually go in there and edit the group and find the individual piece and all that so uh, yeah really really handy tool um, that's gonna make building and Again, changing colors on buildings and everything so much simpler and so much more streamlined. So uh, hopefully that helps out our builder friends a whole bunch. All right, and then to finish out the free update and the uh, overall update to the DLC and free update, we have the, uh, the plant selections here. Which all I could find, I'm pretty sure this is it, is that we have uh, two variations of hostas coming. So, um, yeah, when I say this is it, um, yeah, no, this is a big this is it. At least for me personally, hostas, they're one of those plants that you can just, you see them everywhere. Whether it's interiors, exteriors, you know, they're always in uh, plant beds and plant gardens and everything like that. So, really, really cool that we're getting these. We're not just getting one variation. We have the regular hostas, uh, large, medium, and small. Um, but we're also getting the... Um, variegated uh, hostas as well with a little bit of uh, 
the, the white tips and everything on the leaves. So this is really, really cool. Again, these are just um, kind of plants that you see all over the place uh, for interiors, um, for, you know, offices, just everywhere you look, there's hostas everywhere. So uh, yeah, really, really cool that we are getting that. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure, um, just correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments, pretty sure that is the only um, free uh, vegetation or free um, plants and everything uh, that we are getting with this update. So, uh, but yeah, hey, that goes ahead and finishes it out there. Uh, what do y'all think? Is it pretty good update? Pretty good DLC? Uh, would love to know your thoughts behind it. What's your favorite animal? What is the animal you're going to be building for right away? Again, it seems like everyone is really, really excited for the mute swan. So I'm expecting a lot of swan exhibits to come up right away. Um, but yeah, no, definitely let me know your thoughts down in the uh, comments below. What do you think the next pack is going to be? Birds? Is it finally going to be birds? I think every single pack after this one is birds, right? That's everyone's <laughs> natural thing to go after right away. But yeah, no, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. If you have any um, you know, concerns or questions, anything about um, any of the gameplay factors, go ahead and ask away as well i'll try my best to help out or uh, someone in the comments in the community will definitely help out as well so hey if you suck around this long don't forget hit the uh, like button on your way out also hit the subscribe button we're gonna have a bunch of um Eurasia pack uh, builds and a whole bunch of fun stuff coming out in the next uh, few weeks and everything uh, following this pack's release and everything so hey awesome thanks so much everyone appreciate you as always and until the next video y'all have a good one